for the Edexcel Further Pure One Maths A Level Syllabus. This is the fourth video for numerical solutions of equations. Looking at the scheme of work, we've talked about the change of sign theorem, we've talked about the interval bisection method and linear interpolation method, and in this video we're going to finish off by talking about the newton raphson process. Just some points to bear in mind over this side. The functions will only be functions you've met in C1 and C2, and the differentiation that you're going to need for this will only be the differentiation you needed in C1. <clears throat> okay, let's start with what the big idea is. The newton raphson method helps us find a root, an approximation to a root x is equal to alpha, i.e. the solution to the uh, equation, if we have a function f of x, the solution to the equation f of x is equal to zero. How does it work? Well, briefly, this is the idea. You choose an initial guess at a root. Let's say you choose a guess, and we call it x subscript n. And what you do with that xn you work out the value of the function at xn. So this point here would have coordinates xn, f of xn. Now, newton raphson method then says what it wants you to do is at that guess you tried for a root, draw a tangent to the curve at that point on the curve, at that point xn, f of xn. And then it's saying that my next guess at xn, i.e. xn plus 1, the guess after, is going to be where that tangent crosses the x-axis. And with this, uh, I would, uh, let's say with this here, I would again work out the value of the curve at xn plus 1. So this would have um, x coordinate xn plus 1 y coordinate f of xn plus 1, I would draw a tangent at this point, and again, my next x after that would be the x where that tangent crosses the curve. And as you can see, I'm getting closer and closer to this point here that I want to get to. That's the big idea behind it. Where the formula comes from is as follows. Just in the first case here, what is the equation of that tangent? The equation of straight line is always of the form y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1. m is the gradient of the line. x1, y1 are two points on the line. We know a point on the line is xn, f of xn, i.e. our x1, y1. We know that. And we also know the gradient of the line, the gradient of the tangent, is f dashed evaluated at xn. It's the differential of, of the function f evaluated at xn. So substituting in here, we would have y subtract y1, which is f of xn, is equal to the gradient of the tangent, which is the same as the gradient of the curve, i.e. f dashed of xn, multiplied by x subtract xn. And that would be the equation of that straight line. Now, I defined my next n, uh, my next x guess at uh, xn uh, alpha to be x of n plus 1. And at that point, the one thing I know is that this point here is at x n plus 1, 0. It has y value 0, x value x n plus 1. And if I substitute that into the equation of the straight line, I would get the following. I would get 0 subtract f of xn is equal to f dashed xn xn plus 1 minus xn. And then if I make xn plus 1 the subject of the formula, I get the newton raphson equation. If I make this here the subject of this equation here, uh, it's fairly straightforward, but I would get x uh, n plus, uh, minus subtract f of xn over f dashed xn. And this is an iterative formula that gets me my next x 
then I use that to get the one after and I keep going until I zoom in and I keep getting closer and closer to X is alpha and I get it to the required degree of accuracy. You don't need to know where this formula comes from but I thought it would be useful to explain. What you do need to know is as follows that the newton raphson method solves equations of the form f of x is equal to zero. The newton raphson formula is xn plus 1 equals xn subtract f of xn over f dashed xn. And you also need to know that the newton raphson method on occasion gets you an answer to the root, but sometimes it doesn't get you an answer. And generally, just looking back here, that would be if your first guess was not a good guess for um, the root if it was close to a stationary point. Again, you don't really need to know that. You just need to know the newton raphson method is not foolproof. Anyway, that was the idea behind it. This is the formula you need to be able to apply. Let's do an example. Example 1. Use the newton raphson process to find a root of the equation x to the 4 plus x squared is 80 which is near to x is 3 to 2 decimal places. And I've written for us below the newton raphson formula. <clears throat> Firstly, the newton raphson formula only works when you're trying to find a root of the equation f of x is equal to 0. <clears throat> so, with uh, the equation we're trying to solve, trying to solve that equation there is equivalent, if I subtract 80 of both sides, to solving the equation x to the power of 4 plus x squared subtract 80 is 0. So I can let my f of x be defined to be x to the power of 4 plus x squared minus 80 is 0. I always have to have a function that I'm trying to find its root of, i.e. the x value that makes it 0. In the original case here, this was not a function equal 0. I make it that by subtracting 80 off both sides. OK, get some easy marks. Uh, that's f of x. What's f dashed x, the derivative of this? Well, bring down the power reduced by 1. It would be 4x cubed. Bring down the power, reduce the power by 1. Plus 2x to the power of 1, we just write as 2x. And any constant differentiated differentiates to 0. OK, now let's substitute into this formula here. x to the uh, subscript n plus 1 is equal to x subscript n subtract f of xn. Well, that's when you put xn in here, so let's write brackets xn to the power of 4 plus xn squared subtract 80, all divided by uh, f dashed xn, so put xn in here, it would be 4xn cubed plus 2xn. Now, I know I've been told to start off with x is equal to 3. So let's make x0 equal 3 and let's work out x1. Now, you could just substitute 3 in here and work it out and that would be x1. Then substitute that value for x1 in here, work it out, that would be your x2. There's a much better way using your calculator. And I'm going to show you that in this little bubble over here. This is a an absolute godsend when doing these questions. <clears throat> Type in your calculator 3 equals. So press the 3 button then press equals. That stores 3 as the answer function in your calculator. Right? And now uh, ants is equal to 3. It, you don't have to type that. It is stored as 3. Then what you can do when trying to work this out x1 you can just type in your calculator is equal to ants here. This is instead of writing three or x zero, subtract ants to the power of four plus ants squared subtract eighty divided by four multiplied by ants cubed plus two multiplied by ants. If I type that in my calculator like that, then I can use the iterative method in my calculator to actually keep working out the different x's. So type 3 equals, then type ants subtract brackets, <clears throat> ants to the power of 4 plus ants squared plus 
subtract 80, all divided by 4 ants cubed plus 2 ants, and press equals, and your calculator will say 166 over 57, or decimalizing that, if we're wanting to work to 2 dp, write it as 3 dp, 2.912. Because you have used this ants uh, ability on your calculator, all you need to do now is press equals again on your calculator, and it works out x2. And it tells you that x2 is 2.908. And if you press equals again, that will tell you x3 is 2.908, etc. Keep pressing equals, it will keep telling you the next x in the sequence. Now, these are all the same to two decimal places. They are 2.91 to 2 dp. So the answer is x is equal to 2.91 to two decimal places, and you're done. Using this ANTS facility on the calculator makes the question so much easier. Your turn to try a question. Here we go. Pause the video. In 10 seconds, I'll reveal the answer. Okay, part A just asked you, using differentiation, to find f dashed x. And the answer, very simply, if I just reveal it, should have been 3x squared plus 4x subtract 5. Then it tells you the function f of x equals 0 has a root in between 1 and 2. Use 2 as your first approximation. Use the newton Raphson twice to find an approximation for alpha. So, um... I used the newton raphson twice, and I got myself 1.856 to three decimal places. Just note, the way I've written it there, it might have been easier, and it, it is usually in the exam, to, instead of writing x2, uh, x0 as 2, write 2 equals on your calculator, and then when you're working out, say, x1, you would type ants, subtract, and then you would uh, have f of ants over f dashed of ants, like that, and it would allow you to keep pressing equals and getting x2. That's really good when you have to go up to x5 or x6, but in the case where you've only got to work out x1 and x2, maybe it's just as easy to type it in, and that's the answer. And just to make sure we understand everything, do make sure you read pages 38 39, work through the examples, and do exercise 2c everything, and then to review all the work on numerical methods, do exercise 2D, the mixed exercise, everything. Thank you very much for watching.